guys, it's Katie here again from Bella Creativa and I am back with another project. This one is obviously a carousel. So the red and white one on the left hand side was the first one that I made and it was like my completed prototype. And then the pink and white and silver one on the right hand side is the one that I've made during the tutorial. So I'm pretty pleased with how they turned out. I, um, they're, they're not too difficult to make. It is a rather long tutorial because I include a section in the tutorial where you can put in um, a Lazy Susan to make your carousel spin around. Um, and that ta does take a little bit of time, but I'll put some time stamps on there so that you can um, fast forward through that bit if you would like to. So I'll just show you how, I'll just have to shimmy past the camera. This is not my usual setup, so um, it's not easy to get around my camera, but these guys are too big to really be able to show you on my overhead camera. So I'm just trying to get around the camera without knocking it. <laughs> okay, so this one here is the one that I made um, during the tutorial and we put a little lazy Susan on it so that it spins around like that and I've just noticed for the first time that I've actually put these little guys on the wrong way around on some of them but never mind the little flirt -a laser <laughs> upside down on there uh, it was pretty late when I was doing that I can probably try and take them off and change them but I probably won't <laughs> So that one there spins around. Um, so I made them both using a set of SVG files, which are scalable vector graphic files for electronic cutting machines. If you're interested in making a carousel yourself, you can um, have a look at the SVG files that are in my Etsy store and I'll put a link in the description box below. Otherwise, there's a couple of things that we need to do to the SVG files before we can actually cut the pieces out. So I thought I would just quickly zip over to the computer and show you what needs to be done to the SVG files before you can start cutting them out. I'm using a Cricut, but you can use any electronic cutting machine that will support SVG files. And I'm guessing that the process must be fairly similar. So let's go and have a look at the files. Okay, so here I am at my computer and I have just downloaded the file from my Etsy store and it is a zip folder. So the first thing we'll need to do is unzip it. So I'll just double click on that one and up here I'm gonna click extract all. It's asking me where to put those files once it's, that folder's been unzipped and I'm happy with that. So I'm going to click extract and it brings up that unzipped folder straight away. So you can see in here we have um, six SVG documents, A to F, and then two double-sided um, double two PDF documents. One is uh, a copy of the double-sided booklet that I refer to during the tutorial. So that's there for you to print out if you wish and keep for reference. And the other one is just a, another guide and I won't go through those today because this is already quite a long video. So these um, SVG files A through to F I need to upload to my electronic cutting machine software and in this case I'm using a Cricut but I think that the same principles would apply whichever cutting machine you use. So I'm just going to go over to my Cricut design space and I'm on a blank canvas. So the first thing I need to do is click on upload and then I'm going to click on upload image and click browse and I'm going to navigate back to this folder here which is the unzipped folder and double click on that and then I'm just going to double click on my A file and that's it there I'm happy with that you can give it any name that you would like it might be better to include carousel somewhere in that um, image name and then click save and I'm just going to go ahead and do that for all six so upload um, browse double click on B I'm happy with that click save upload image browse C save and 
we only need to do this once and then if we if we make our changes to the pieces um, then we can save it as a project and we don't ever have to do this again so it takes a few minutes to set up but because we can save all our changes we don't ever have to do that again okay so now I'm going to select each one of those one two three four five six and click insert images and it's going to bring it up on my canvas and dump them all on top of each other thinking about it pretty hard this morning there we go so the first thing I'm going to do is just go down here to the left hand side and minimize the um, resolution of my canvas I think that's the word I'm looking for maybe not resolution it's a bit early for me too <laughs> and then I'm going to bring all of these out um, so that I can lay them out individually and rearrange them like so so let's find the A file that's one that one there let's work through each of the files uh, separately so this is our A file we need to change these we don't need to change those lines but we actually need to attach them if we go over here to the layers panel we've, we can see that we've got two sets of cut lines on the pink piece and then on the blue piece so the pink piece is the mat if you want to cut out a mat to put on top of the card stock that you would cut out of the blue piece then you would use the pink piece as your mat the first thing we need to do is ungroup it Okay, and then if I go back and click on that top section, it has highlighted the, um, the pink piece. And those lines there, you can see are cut lines. Normally we change those to score lines, but we're actually going to keep them as cut lines this time. But what we do need to do is attach them. So I just need to go straight down to, to the attach down the bottom here and click attach. And I'm happy with that. So I'm just going to um, minimize that in my layers panel. Then I'm going to, um, I might even hide it so we can see what's underneath. So there's the blue piece underneath. Again, we have cut lines on that A section blue piece, which is the way we want it to be, but we want to attach them. So I'm going to click on the A next to the arrow so it highlights both the cut piece, the cut lines and the actual piece itself and click attach. And then I'm just going to minimize that and I'll probably... Um, unhide the pink mat but you can see that the pink mat isn't there it's sitting underneath so I'm just going to right click on my blue piece and say center back and now I can see my pink um, mat and my blue piece I'm going to stretch over both of those and click group and that just makes it easier to deal with so I've done that one okay now we're looking for our B piece this is our B piece we do not need to do anything to that so that's great this would be our C file. I'll just move this over here. We need to do exactly the same thing here, which is attach these lines here. We're going to leave them as cut lines, but we do need to attach them. So we're just going to come over here and click attach. And that one's done. Okay, so this one here is our D file. We have a one pink mat sitting on top, but that mat will fit each of these sections. But on this blue piece here, we need to change these lines, these internal lines from cut lines to score lines. So the first thing we need to do is click on it and ungroup it because right now it's grouped together with the pink mat. And then I'm going to click on the blue piece and if I come over to the layers panel, I can see that I've got this section here highlighted that says cut lines and it's got all those lines. So I'm going to individually click on that. And then come up here to line type up at the left and change that from cut to score. And you can see that it's changed those lines to dash line now, which is what we want. But we need to attach those to the blue piece itself. So I'm going to click on, um, in the layers panel, I'm going to click on the D so that it's got both the piece and the score lines highlighted and click attach. Now what you'll see is once again the pink mat has disappeared. It's just sitting behind it. So I'm going to right click and say centre back. And that's all done. Now I'm just going to select both pieces together and click group. And that's D done. So this would be our E file. We need to do the same thing. Wherever there are internal lines, we need to change them from cut to score. So let's do that. Ungroup, click on this guy here, click on the cut lines, change them to score lines, select the whole piece and click attach. And do the same with this one. I'm going to change the cut lines to score lines. Click on the whole piece, click attach. 
This time I need to right click and say send to back and then select both pieces and click group so that my mat doesn't go missing. This one here we need to click on the blue piece, change those cut lines to score lines. Click on the whole thing, click attach. We need to send it to the back and then select all of those pieces together and click group. Okay, same for this one here, but you can see that both pieces have got um, lines on them that we need to change. So both the mat and the actual piece itself, we need to change those cut lines to score lines. And the same with the little blue piece underneath, if I can pick it up. I can't, but I can see it over here in my layers panel, so I'll just go over here. Click on those lines, click cut, change them to score, click attach. I need to send this one to the back and then select the whole piece, the both pieces and select group. So now we're on to our last file which is our F file, so I'm going to click ungroup. Don't need to do anything to the horse, let's just go in a bit larger shall we for this one. Whoops, whoops, there we go. So the horse doesn't have any cut lines um, so that's fine but what I am going to do is group all of that section together. So just move these fleur de -lis out the way and I want to group together the mats, the pink pieces that are sitting on top of the blue piece. So I'm just going to select that whole piece and click group and that's taken care of. Now this one here has got some little lines on it that we need to change to score lines. So I'll just go over and select those lines and change them from cut to score and click attach. Now the uh, swan has got some lines we need to change so I'm going to uh, select the blue swan, change those cut lines to score lines and click attach and now I'm going to send the swan to the back and then I'm going to select, oh I don't know, I might have to move this little guy out of the way too, there we go. Now I'm going to select all of those bits together and click group. Now I can put this guy back over here. He was just going to get caught up in my group. Now there are no score lines on this piece here, so I'm just going to group those guys together. On this one, these lines along here of the bottom of the picket fence, we need to change to score lines. So in my layers panel, I'm going to change those from cut to score and click attach. Then I need to send it to the back so that I can see the little pink pieces on top. And just move this group out of the way for a minute so then I can just select all of those pieces together and click group. Just makes it so much easier to deal with. We can put that back there now. And we can put our fleur de -lis back over here as well. And then this guy here, we just need to select those two pieces and group them together. So let's zoom back out again. Oops, maybe not that much. And there we go, we've done everything we need to do to all of those files. So now if I click save, I'm going to call it carousel. Oops, I'm going to try to spell it correctly. Carousel. <laughs> carousel and click save. So now I don't need to do anything with those pieces again. Um, if I want to cut out multiple pieces, I can duplicate them. Um, but I will never need to change the cut lines to score lines. That's all been done. Okay, so that's how to cut all the pieces out. So now let's go over to the table and we can make our um, carousel. So I'll see you on my desk in a minute. Okay, so I have cut out all my pieces to make my carousel and I will put a list in the description box below of how many of each piece I cut out. So you don't need to try and remember um, what, how many of each piece I've cut out. But I'll just show you as I go through in my little book um, of the screenshots of all the pieces that I've cut out. And there's not too many files. I think there are six in total for this one. Yeah, six files. So this little booklet that I make is also a part of the download. So if you wanted to make your own little booklet like this and print it out um, and refer to, you can. But um, I've just put the... Um, a screenshot of each of the files in here and given them all an alphanumeric number so that or just an yeah alphanumeric because these are alphanumeric 
um, numbers in here just so I can easily tell you which pieces they are. So we're going to start with making the top. Um, so I have cut out some of these E2 pieces and I've cut out 12 of them. I've cut out six in the white and six in pink so that I can alternate them. There's also mats available here. So these pieces here are the pieces I've cut out of cardstock and they're the blue pieces. You can cut out mats to go on top and that's the pink piece here and you could cut that out of scrapbook paper. But I am just going to stick with the cardstock for mine. But you know, if you've got something that you think would look really good, then these pieces are already shaped and easy to cut out. So I've got six of each of these and we just need to put them together. So I have already gone ahead and folded on all of the score lines so that that wouldn't take quite so long. Um, so I'm just going to take one of the pink and one of the white ones. So you can see here these are the tabs that I've folded in and also these tabs here. I need some glue and that mark off there and just check that my lights are nice and bright for you and it's just a matter of putting some glue on I'm just I'm ignoring this tab here for now I'm just going with all of these tabs here along that um, angled piece so I'm just putting some glue on each of these tabs this takes a minute because we've got 12 pieces but uh, that's okay, I don't know about you, but I tend to watch a bit of YouTube or a bit of Netflix or something while I'm crafting. And then I'm just going to lay it down and take my next piece and line it up on that angle and press it down. Probably would have been easier if I'd pulled my little tabs out first of all. I'm just going to line it up and press it down. So the um, important thing is to line up these bottom sections so when we glue that together that this fold line here and this fold line here are about the same so I feel like I might want to move that piece up a fraction and in a little bit like so. Let's check that so that it folds when I, when I glue this, this tab together here that these two um, fold lines are next to each other and I'm happy with that. So. I'm just going to run my bone folder along there and along there. So now I can add a white one to this side. So I'll just grab one of my white ones and put some glue on this one here. Oh, a big blob of glue there. That's nice. <laughs> so there might be a little bit of noise in the background. I apologize. I do have my air conditioner running. It just makes a little faint hum, but I don't know how how loud it is on camera. Okay, so then I'm just going to pop this one down on here in exactly the same way. Like so. Don't worry if they don't line up at the top, that doesn't matter. They they should, but it doesn't matter if they don't, because we're going to cover that up. Okay, so I'm happy with that. I can burnish that down as well. I'm not very good at working with white cardstock and keeping it clean. It has to be set. So then I can add a pink one on here. I'm just going to go around and I'll put all of these on together, um, all 12 of them, and then I'll come back and I'll show you the next step. Okay, so here's what my um, tent top looks like now that I've put all 12 of these um, little um, triangular pieces together. So then the next thing we need to do is join this one up to this one. So once again, we're just ignoring this little tab here for now and just going to put glue on all of these angled ones. Yep. On there. And then I'm just going to bring them together and line them up along here 
down here. And then I can, I can actually turn it over and lay it down this way. Let's see if it's still lined up pretty good. Not bad. Okay. So I'll just put my, I'll just run my um, little burnishing tool down here and make sure that it's well attached. And there's our little top. Oh, I like it in the pink and white. It looks snazzy. So now we're just going to go around and all these little tabs here, I'm just going to pop some glue on those and then attach it to the next piece along like that. Okay, so let's, let's have a go at that. So I'm going to put a bit of glue on here and then attach them like so. Might need to hold it for a minute. Wipe that excess glue off. And then I'm just going to go around and do that with all of them. And yeah, it wants to move. And so what I might do is just bend it over. I don't want I'm, this tab here won't stick to it, but I'm just going to bend it back. So then I'm just going to put a little paper clip on there so that it will dry. So then I can move on to the next one. Otherwise, I'll be sitting here holding it forever. I'm just far too impatient for that. So I'm just going to slide that one underneath, like so, and line them up so that tab's nice and straight. Give it a press. Excuse my fingernails. Um, this glue, as good as it is at sticking, not so good for nail polish. <laughs> it's just been eating my nail polish off every time I make a mess with my glue, and that is frequent. <laughs> okay, so a bit of glue on this tab. Stick that one on there, hold it on for a second, and just wipe that off, and wipe it off again because I've put way too much glue under there. Okay, I'll just bend that little tab over for now so it's out of the way, and pop that under there. Alright, so I'll go ahead and do that all the way around so that you don't have to sit here and watch me and then we will come back. But that is essentially all we need to do for our top for this bit. So I'll finish that off and then we'll be back in a minute. All right, so here's my um, tent top for my carousel and I have glued all of those tiny little tabs here on the inside all the way around so that they're all glued in together and then I've just folded these tabs over um, and we're just gonna leave it like that for now and we're gonna go and work on the base. So there's our tent top. I think it looks lovely. I love the pink and white. I think it's cute. I'll just pop that behind me. Now we're going to work on the base. So I've cut some bits out for my base piece already. Let's talk about those. Um, and this is where our first optional extra is going to come into place. I have bought... Where have I put it? I have bought this Lazy Susan bearing plate. Now the one I've got here is 100 millimeters. Um, in Australia, I bought this from Bunnings. It cost me $4.40. If I can buy this in Australia from Bunnings, you can buy this anywhere. So this is um, called a Lazy Susan bearing plate. So just Google it and you'll be fine. And it's got instructions on the back and I have I did this for my little rotating hexagonal drawers and I'm not sure that I did a very good job of explaining it. I'm hoping I'll do a better job this time. So we're going to I'm going to attach this. You don't have to do this section at all. So this is a, this is the first option for you is to um, put a rotating um, lazy Susan on there. So um, if you're doing the lazy Susan then you'll need some extra pieces. But let's start with what you need if you're not doing the Lazy Susan. If you're not doing the Lazy Susan, you just need one of these B pieces here. Um, and I've cut this out of, it's like a chipboard, but it's, it's pretty light, as you can tell. I don't know what GSM it is. I don't even know if it would be 300, but it's what I had. And I just try to use what I've got available. So. If you've got a thicker cardstock and you're happier to cut it on your cutting machine, then go ahead and cut something a bit firmer. But this is going to be our base, okay? 
And then I also have cut out um, some of these A sections here. So let's have a look at that. I have cut out an A section with this, the blue piece underneath. So the pink piece on top is the mat, the blue piece on the bottom I have cut out and I've cut two of them out. I've cut one out of white cardstock and it looks manky because I've got glue all over it which wasn't very clever but it's okay because we're going to cover it up. Never fear. And then I've also cut um, one of those blue pieces at the back out of that this same um, chipboard or whatever it is. And I've just already just gone ahead and glued those together because I just wanted it to be a little extra bit stronger. So that's that piece there. So that's two A pieces, the two of the blue cardstock A pieces, and I've just sandwiched them together um, and, and glued them together for a bit of extra strength. Then um, the pink mat on top, I've also cut one of those out and I just happen to have also cut that out in pink cardstock. You could cut that out of scrapbook paper, you, you could cut it out of any colour you like, I just, I'm going with pink and white today. So that's, um, that's what you need if you're not doing the Lazy Susan. If you're doing the Lazy Susan, then we also need to cut out some more of these bottom pieces. So what I've done is I've cut out another one of the bottom bases out of the chipboard and then I've cut out two more of them out of um, pink cardstock so I've got three of these for the bottom um, for my lazy Susan okay so let's put that aside so the first thing I'm going to do I think is attach one of these pink pieces to here uh, you can, do I sound like I'm thinking as I'm doing it because I am. <laughs> so I'm going to attach this to here straight away. Come out, glue, hurry up, hurry up. doesn't line up perfectly it doesn't matter we can trim it we can trim it all right I'm just gonna attach that on there like that so far so good so I'm feeling a bit panicky about doing this lazy Susan business on camera so let's hope I don't confuse you even more so the first thing I'm going to do is we obviously know where the center is but I'm just going to draw a line and from this side to this side where those hexagonal points are and I am doing it on this cardstock uh, like so and like so like so and then and then thinking out loud I'm going to take this out of its packet and now on mine, I don't know if it's the same on everybody's, um, mm, that's bizarre because it's not the same as the picture, it's not the same as last time, let's have a look. Um, I'm going to... I want to attach this on here and I want to make sure I've got it centered so I'm going to measure the distance from here to here and it's 14 centimeters I work in centimeters you just do the same thing and use whatever measuring uh, system you use okay so that's 14 centimeters from here to here so to I want to find out where that's going to go. This is, happens to be 28 centimetres, so I know that if this is centred at 14 centimetres from here to here, then it needs to line up 7 centimetres here, and then 7 centimetres from here, which is about there. Right. So my plate is going to sit here, from here to here, I'm lining up that top section here with this section and then I'm just going to spin this around so I can see those bottom 
uh, holes and I've lined it up I'm lining it up on the center of my line and then I'm going to hold it down and put little um, marks where each of those holes are those four bottom ones okay and then um, I need to measure this evenly around so it's you know at a 90 degree angle from this is that making sense it's evenly off center I just need to turn it this way right like that that seems about right and then I need to put a mark here but my pencil's not going to fit through there so I'll put a stabby hole I'm going to get my awl and make a mark just there like that okay right now I can take this away and I'm just going to put a circle around that little hole there so I've got my right so these four holes here I need to stabby stab into like so one two three and four ouch stabbed myself too okay and then I need some of these split pins so I bought in Australia I bought these from office works they're you know they're called paper fasteners and they have these legs on the end you need ones with long legs now these ones are 25 millimeter long legs and I've these seem to be working pretty well for me so then we're going to put this guy back on here where those holes are and I'm going to feed these through from this side to the back so my legs are on the back All right and then when that's there I can just twist and flatten those little guys out like that so I'm going to do that for all four holes. So far, so good. Like so. And then this one. As I say again, you don't have to do this. Um, I've just discovered the joys of Lazy Susan, so everything that I can, I'm thinking, oh, I could put a Lazy Susan on that, and they cost next to nothing, you know, less than $5 for this big one, and you can get smaller ones too, but I, I erred on the side of caution and went with the large one. Okay, that's good, I'm happy with that. Now, where that hole was here that I marked, we need to put a hole in here but it needs to be bigger than I can make with my awl because we are, we're going to feed one of these through we need to be able to feed the whole thing including the head so I'm going to get out my little cutting board here and now you won't see this hole um, in the end so there's no need to panic about what it looks like. I'm just going to cut in here like so. I cut a triangle because the triangle is easier for me. Right, then let's just make sure that we can feed one of these right through. Oh, yeah, let's make it a little bit easier. Make it a little bit bigger. Like so. Okay, so that's that. We can put the super sharp cutting implements away. Okay. Alright. Let's put some, I'm going to put some masking tape on these, on the back here just to neaten those up. You don't really need to but because I'm going to put this other um, pink piece on here but just to save them poking out we'll just bit of tape up and stick it on. 
You could be much neater and cut it off, of course. Just press it down. Right, we'll put this just aside for a moment. Okay, let's have a look. Okay, let's go ahead and stick this one on top, and that will. This is the bottom, the very bottom of our bottom. <laughs> This is the bit that's going to be sitting on the floor, on the tabletop, so it's just neatening it up, really. Alright, so let's put some glue on here. Like so. a bigger glue bottle I suppose I feel like it would pop well should have I should have gone with that option to start with there we go sorry to make you suffer through that I'm just really bad at using too much glue all the time uh, so I try to limit how much glue I can actually put down. All right, so then I'm gonna pop this one on here and line that one up as best I can. And you know, again, if it's not perfect, don't stress, we can trim it off. Okay, now I'm gonna flip it over and just give it a good press. So I lined it up very well over here, but that's okay. Alright, so that's the bottom. Alright, how are we going? Okay, next step is we need the other B. So um, let's get that rid of that. We need we need this one here. So this is exactly the same piece as this one, um, and we're going to line it up like so. Actually, we should probably turn it over. Oh, this is silly me. I am. Um, I've covered up that hole. See, panic, panic. I should not have stuck that back bit on yet. Oh, can I get it off? Mm, I can. After all that, don't put this bit on yet. Okay. <laughs> I thought. Oh dear. Um. Because what we're going to do is line these two up like so, okay, and then we're going to spin this around until we find a hole. So these are lined up, and now I'm just spinning the top around and I'm waiting to find a hole in there, um, which is where our first. Um, split pin is going to go through there right and then oh I moved it go back again I'm not standing overhead either which probably isn't helping too much all right I found a hole I'm gonna put a, a mark there and then I'm gonna spin it around Spin it around till I find the next hole and put a mark there and then I'm going to spin it around again without moving it. I feel like I just moved it. Put another one there and then spin it around again to find the last hole which is somewhere around there. Okay, oh. now I'm going to take that off and where those marks are we are going to put a hole like so. There's one, there's two, oh I can't see that one, I think that's it there, three and here I've got about four holes so 
I'll just have to take a guess at that one. Okay, then we're going to take this and line it back up again and hopefully I might need to stand up. Okay, and now we need to line up the hole that we just made with the hole in the base plate. So let's see if I can find and put I'm lining up this hole that I've made here with that hole in the base plate, that hole there, and then I'm going to line it up with that hole there. And if I get one right, then they should all be right. right so let's stick that in there. Flip it over. And then... Sorry if my head's in the... I didn't even think about that. I have brushed my hair today, but you wouldn't know it. <laughs> Been out in the garden. Okay, so let's give that a good press. All right, so then we need to do the same thing. So this hole needs to line up there. I could probably sit down now. Probably seen enough of my bird's nest. Put that hole in there. that like so. I'm just going to go around and do that for the next two holes. There. Like so. And the last one. I can't see it. Here. Right. Okay, and then that one, like so. Okay, so now let's check that we're happy with how that spins. Looks pretty good to me. So again, I'm just going to stick some, some masking tape on there. scissors and as well. Again you're not going to actually see this so don't don't panic. And this one. So I have not done this whole thing before in terms of putting a lazy Susan on it so um, this optional extra is new for me too so I'm, I'm bumbling along a little bit. So, okay, so now you know where I put that thing on the back, that, that um, nice neat finish on the back and then had to rip it off. We can put that back on now, so let's do that. All right. We'll spin it. How cool is that? <laughs> Okay. Luckily we can clean up my mess. Okay. Let's put this guy back on. Might be a bit more difficult to line up now. Definitely. I'll put that on there. Oh. And I've got glue on my fingers too. That's how I keep ruining my nail polish. Okay. That's pretty good. I'll just run around here. Like so. So we have a spinny base so now we can we build our carousel on top of here so if you don't if you weren't doing the um the spinning bottom the lazy shoes at the bottom then this is where you'd start from we'd start with this piece here all right so moving on 
we need some more pieces. We need. Um, this piece here, E3, so the blue piece of that is the cardstock. I've cut four of those out and that's these ones here. And I've just already worked ahead and put some mats on top. So, so these three mats here, I've cut out and attached to um, each of these. So I have four of the E3s and I've attached the mats, um, three of the mats um, for each one of those on here. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we are going to attach um, this tab here onto here or I might even try and attach it underneath. I feel like that might give it a bit more strength if I do that. So if I put the glue on here and then attach it along that side there. And I think I might use a different glue. I think I might use this one. This is Tiger Grip Glue. It's my Ever Faithful. So I'm just going to pop that on here. No, I'm not because it's not coming out. Let me just get a pin. Sorry. There we go. Right, let's try that. Okay. There we go. And I'm going to slide it just under this one here and attach it there like that. And we're not going to see that bottom, so that'll be fine. And I'm just going to press it down and fold it over along there like so. And then I'm just going to put a little paper clip on there to hold it. And then we need to do this all the way around. Um, so we have four of these and we're going to attach them. So let me, so then once that's set up a little bit, I can attach, I can put some glue on this tab and on this tab. And I'm going to drag this one around to here and attach it underneath. I'll press it down. And the same with this one here. So you can see what we're doing. We're just building up that base. Like so. Just give them the glue a minute to set up. And then I'm going to attach the next one here. So we're going to make sure that the tabs are all facing the same way because this tab is going to attach on here. And then we're going to attach these bottom tabs across the bottom like so. So should we do that? I'll put some glue on this tab. And then I can put some glue on these. Should I do all three at once? I feel like that's where everything goes wrong for me when I put glue on everything at once. But never mind. I'm going to attach that one here. And along here. I just feel like I don't have enough hands. that one and then I'm just going to attach the that tab to this piece here let me have a look make sure I've lined it up properly there and I attach that one like so looks all right okay so I'll just go ahead and do these last two and um, then I'll, I'll come back so you don't have to watch me, but I'm doing exactly the same thing. I'm going to attach this one around here and attach that one to that one. Then I'm going to attach this one to this one around here and then close it up with this one here at the end. All right, so I'll do that and then I'll be right back. All right, so I have gone around and attached all of my E3 pieces to my bottom section here and then glued um, the tabs together so that it's one piece like so so we're just going to put that together um to the side for a moment um it can dry off and we don't need it right now so let's just pop that to the side with my tent top and the next piece we need is dun, 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 this d piece here so this is our center pole um this big piece in the middle here, that D piece, 
and I have cut a six of these pink mats out and attached them already so this is my D piece here and I've already folded it on all of the um, score lines and we've got a tab here and then I have attached my six um, mats across there like that just so it save a bit of time so all we need to do is you need to just fold it on all those score lines and fold all the little tabs like so and then we're just going to put some glue on this tab here and put some glue on this tab here this one here and then I'm going to fold it in and underneath this one like so line it up I can only do it one way it's funny isn't it okay like so and then I can probably flatten it down and give it a good push like so so then when we open it up we have a six-sided well, some kind of a prism <laughs> Okay, so there we go. That's our centerpiece. Now we need to come back to our top of our base here, this A piece. So you'll remember that I cut it out. I cut out two. Um, I cut out one out of chipboard, and then I attached one out of the white cardstock on top. And we are going to um, feed the these tabs here through each of these little slots here. So I'm just gonna make those a little more obvious so I can get my little tabs in there. Okay, and then I'm going to um, fiddle faddle around. It's, it's, a bit, it's a bit tricky trying to feed these through, but basically maybe if I, maybe if I stand it up like this, I am going to feed each one of these little tabs through one of these little slits here like like <laughs> oh, there's no easy way of doing this I don't feel especially not on camera I'm trying not to put my head in there how about I do it off camera and then I can show you what I've done because it is a bit fiddly Actually, I'll tell you what we need to do is we do need to attach this mat on first. I just remembered, but we only want to just loosely attach it around the center here for now. So let's just do that. Oh, glad I didn't manage to get those in after all that. So I'm just going to put some glue around here. And just a little bit around those. And we'll go back and put glue on the rest later. Alright, so I'm uh, just going to line it up somehow, um, pretty much like something like that, looks good, and just press that down, okay, phew, another thing I forgot, got so sidetracked, so then I'm going to press those through again, <laughs> Okay, so now I'm going to feed these little tabs into these little slots here, alright? Okay, so I have got my centerpiece attached to my bottom section here. So you can see I've managed to get those tabs in and then I've glued them down. Um, it wasn't easy. I don't know if it's just me or... But that was harder than than putting on that lazy Susan, just trying to feed them through there. And so then the bad news, we have to do the same with the top section. So let me show you the top section. So this is the bottom of our, um, this bottom section here of our carousel. And now we need to put an, a section on top here to attach our tent top to. So 
that piece that we need now is the C section, which is the bottom of the tent top. Okay, so this is the one with all the little um, stars cut out. So the reason that I've done that is because I wanted to give us the option of putting some lights in here and I thought if we had some little stars that, that the lights would be able to twinkle through the stars. If you don't want to put any little fairy lights in here then you could still use this one and it just wouldn't twinkle or you could instead use this um, one here which is this piece here. Either way um, it, this piece and this piece are exactly the same but this one has got the stars cut out of it. So this, um, not the A piece, sorry. I have cut out two of these C pieces and sandwiched them together. So one I've cut out of the cardstock, not the cardstock, the chipboard, and one I've cut out of pink cardstock and I've glued them together already so that it's a bit thicker. Um, and I'm going to attach it so that my pink um, section is facing the um, bottom section here like this and I'm just going to go around and do exactly the same thing so I'm going to poke these tabs through these slits and then glue them on top like that so I'll go ahead and do that I will not put you through what just happened before <laughs> okay I did find for this one at least I could shove my hand in here and sort of do that you know sort of hold it and move it around a bit from the inside but I don't have the luxury of being able to do that for this top section so I'm just you know I'll save you from having to listen to me harumphing and trying to get it through um, but basically I'm just trying to feed those tabs through these slots and then gluing them down okay so that's the next step I'll go away and do that and then I'll be right back Alright, so I have managed to put my top section on. It wasn't quite as painful, it turns out, as the bottom section. But, um, so and it looks like this at the moment. And now we can come back with our base. Here's our base that we've already made. And what we're going to do is put glue on these tabs and attach this base to here like this. Alright, so... Um, I'm just going to put some glue on my tabs around here. Isn't that cool that I can spin it around? Like this. All the way around and then I'm just going to line this up hook it on top line it up as best I can and just I'm just going to slowly work around making sure that each little section is sticking to the tab and is lined up like so where I need to pull it out a little bit, I just pull it out a little bit. And just carefully glue them into place. And you get like so. This one's come right out here. In your hop. There we go. Okay. Let's pull it out a bit. One of the things, my little my little cricket hooky tool is really useful for if I need to pull things out or this actually feels like it needs to go in a little bit. Around like so. And then this little bit here needs to come out a touch. And then I'm just going to make sure that that's well and truly attached all the way around. 
this little bit here needs to go in a bit. Oops, I might need to put some more glue on there. And then I'm just going to leave this aside to dry. If I need to go back and fill in any gaps with the glue, then I can do that. You know, it just takes a little, a little fussing around to get it sitting just the right way. So once we've done that, then we can put that little guy, I'm just going to put him, oops, I'm not going to pick him up like that. I'll just put him aside to dry. And let's work on a couple of other little things while that's drying. So now we have some little little um, bits and pieces to make. So let's have a look at this. Let's start with the E1. Now these are the posts, um, the poles. So I've already gone ahead and made some poles just to save a bit of time, but I'll show you how I made them. I saved one. So I've just cut mine out of white cardstock and I've cut eight of these E1 pieces, okay? And then I've just folded along the score line, so I've got a little tab there. And I like to use some little bulldog clips to help me with this, so I'll just pop those there. And all we need to do is just pop a bit of glue along this tab. I've got glue stuck to every finger. Put some glue along this tab here. And then I'm just going to pull it up and stick those that edge together, that top edge together with that tab like so, all the way along. I work my way to the end, make sure that my end is lined up, and then I just take a little, a little bulldog clip, and I just right on the tiny edge, just hold that together like so. And then I'm just going to go along and press that in and do the same all the way. I think I might need to turn it around this way so I can see what I'm doing. So uh, if you've got some big fat straws um, at home or that you can find, you could just as easily use some straws, but I don't. So. And I also like to be able to give you as much of the um, design that you can make out of cardstock as possible so that you can make these yourself. So I'm just going to pop that on there. And I'm just going to make sure it's well and truly glued on all the way along, like so. And then I'll just leave that aside for a couple of minutes to dry and there's my bit of ribbon and I'll show you what I do with that. Okay, so that's that guy there. We'll come back to him in a minute. Let's have a look at some of these other pieces. Um, let's look at the swan. So F3 I'm working on now. So I've already gone ahead and made some swans. Here they are here. Aren't they gorgeous? Just love them. So I've made three already and I'm going to make one more. So I'm making four of the horses and four of the swans. You can do anything you like. So I've got another one here, I've got a little, little bent up. And then I have got one here that I have cut out and I have already um, cut out the mats for those and put them on there. So it's a little bit finicky putting them on, you don't have to, but these pink pieces here I've cut out of this pink glitter cardstock and I've also done the same with these tiny little beaks and the tiny little eyes and I've just popped them on there and I find that um, for that job my tweezers came in really handy so I just picked, you know, put a little blob of glue here and then I just picked up my eye off my Cricut um, mat and then just popped it on there and the same with my little beaks. And then all we need to do is fold on the creases on the score lines. So we have a score line there, we have a score line there, we have one here, let's fold along there and my cardstock doesn't look like it's cut through very well. 
I should also mention that for these guys here, I have cut my little pieces, my horses and my swans, out of 300 GSM cardstock. So it's, they're just a bit thicker than the normal cardstock that I use. Um, I just thought that that would um, keep it a bit more, um, a little, give it a little bit more strength. But I don't know if I set my Cricut to cut through something quite so strong so these little pieces here didn't come off quite properly. Okay, and then we have two little tabs here. I've got glue stuck to my fingernail again. And here. And then here. And here. So then we can just put a little bit of glue on these tabs here and these guys here and here and it's going to fold this up and bring it in just just on the, right on the inside of his little body there so that you can't see the tab and then I'm just going to do exactly the same on the other side like so and then I'm going to do the same on the back I'm bringing this back one up and just bringing it inside of his little tail feather like so and then just lining it up about the same on the other side like so and then I have a little swan so now I've got four little swans so I'll just put him aside to dry and let's do some horses I've already gone ahead and done myself some horses so you can see that um, it's I've decorated them on both sides that's up to you if that's how you want to do it and so I have I have already made three of my horses so I'll pop those there and I've got one more here that we can make together so for the horses I have cut out two of the F1 pieces but one of them I have mirrored because because we're going to have them both facing the same way um, I actually mirrored this one so that my um, mats would be facing the, the right way because if I cut it out this way then the mats would be on this side which isn't what I wanted maybe that's what you want but for me I wanted it to be decorated on each side like so okay and then I did the same thing I've attached all my little mats here and again I um, used the pink um, glitter cardstock and used my trusty little tweezers to put all these little these little bits on and if you don't mind doing finicky things then it, it's not too bad and then we need two of these pieces here so they are the F2 pieces and that's these two here and we have two and they have the score lines on those so we just need to fold that over like so and burnish that down and fold on, on that side so it's like a little U with the circle in the middle. And then we're going to do the same with this one. Like that. And like that. And then on one of them, I'm going to put some glue on the inside of these, these little U-shaped tab things that come up. Like that. And then taking this one, I'm going to place this one on the inside of it like so and then just glue the tab together like that on both sides she says not very well let me just hold that one down maybe I should just do one side at a time and stop trying to um, do everything at the same time okay okay so that's a, that's where our um, pole is going to thread through so then I just take my horse here, the side that's not decorated, I'm going to put some glue on this side of this little funny thing here, like so. And then I'm just going to glue it down and I just pretty much go for the centre, maybe a little bit higher, it doesn't really matter, it really doesn't matter, because we can move him up and down on the pole. I just, I probably want it to be yeah there's good there's as good as anywhere right 
And then I'm going to do the same. I'm going to put some glue on this side. And then I'm going to plunk this horse on top. What I think is the right place. And then, oops, that didn't work very well. And then if I stand him up, if, they, if it stands up straight, so I need to pull this front one down a touch because they'll, if they stand up straight like so, then I know that they're lined up and then I can just squash them together and not quite that hard though. <laughs> okay, and there's my little horsey. Ah, so that was easy too. So we've done, we've got four horses. We've got four swans. Okay, now let's have a look at let's have a look at the um, fence F7. I've already done those. I just thought I would show you. These are my fences here. So I have cut out. I've actually I've doubled this up. So I've got two, I cut out two and stuck them together to make one piece of fence. And then I've cut out the little top sections, which you might be able to see here, they're in pink. This is an option, you don't have to do that at all. I've cut those out of that pink glitter cardstock as well. And then um, when I stuck these together, I actually cut the tabs off the bottom of one of these so that I was only folding one tab in, like so. So I stuck two together, or I cut the tabs off one, then I stuck the two together and then I folded these tabs over. And I have got four of those guys and they are all ready to go. So you need four of the fence posts. Okay, so that's those ones. Then F6, let's have a look at those. F6, I've already done these as well, just to save a bit of time. So the blue piece, uh, the blue piece on here, it's actually an outline. So um, the, um, the pink section is is a solid piece and then I've put the blue section on top. In this case, the pink section I've cut out of silver um, glitter cardstock and then the this blue piece here, I have cut out of the white cardstock and I've actually cut the tabs off my white cardstock so I've only got the glitter tabs on each side. Then I have cut out 12 of these F5 fleur de lis and pop them in the center and I put a little bit of bling on top. So I've done that four times. So I have four of these. Okay, so that they are all ready to go. And then I have done exactly the same thing with the F8 piece. So they're a bit wider, but they look like that. And I have cut out four of those as well. And I've put the little, the, the large, the F4 fleur de lis, I've put in the middle of these ones. And then I've also put a bit of bling on those because I can't, couldn't help myself. So they're all ready to go. And then um, the E4 piece. Let's do that later, shall we? We'll do that at the end. And then let's just go back to our pole, which should be dry by now. I'm going to take those little guys off that back in there and then I'm just going to pop really gently just pop it out so that it's sort of rounder it's not perfectly round but you know it's okay I can live with that and I don't think I don't think anyone can tell that it's not perfectly round I think they're looking at it thinking oh I don't know your poles aren't round okay so then I put a little bit of glue in the top I think I might use this glue a little bit of glue in the top here and I've got this piece of ribbon now my piece of ribbon is 30 30 40 50 60 70 it's about 50 centimeters long and you don't need that much but that's I've cut um, a 50 centimeter piece long piece of ribbon uh, you could use um, in my other one in this one I use curling ribbon, you know, that you use to um, to decorate gifts. So I just pop that in there and then I'll just put a little paper clip on here. Just give it a second to set up. So I just hold it in there with a little paper clip. 
and then just give that a little second to set up. And while we're doing that, uh, let's see, I'll clear all this away and we'll come back and we'll put the ribbon on here and then we'll start putting everything together. So I'll see you in a minute. Okay, so I've cleared my desk away and I've given this little ribbon a chance to dry to that top section. So now I just turn my ribbon over and get a little bit of glue and just run a really fine line. I'm going to try. Maybe this isn't the right glue for me. I think I should use this one here, which is a bit finer. So I'll just hopefully, hopefully it'll want to come out for me. I just run a really fine line of glue down my ribbon, like so. Yeah, that's good. Like so, to the end, and then I just spin my pole while wrapping my ribbon around and I don't lose too much sleep over what it looks like at the top because that is actually going to be covered up anyway so don't worry that it's not sitting perfectly up there and then we just keep running it around like so This um, ribbon was a little bit brighter than what I had in mind, but I'm determined to use the things that I have a bit more this year. Um, I have a lot of things sitting around, so you can see I've got about 10 centimeters spare, which I do not need. So you could probably go away with about 40 centimeters of ribbon. Okay, so yeah, this is a little bit brighter than what I had in mind, <laughs> but I had it and I've had it for years and I just want to start using some of the things that I have. So that is why we're using fluoro pink polka dot ribbon. <laughs> okay, so then I've just um, glued it on the inside and just stuffed it in there with my tweezers. And that is my pole. So now all I need to do is attach my little guy to here. So I'm just gonna carefully wriggle my um, horse through this hole so the horse is a little bit tricky you need to be a little bit delicate with it so I've got it through one hole now I need to just get it through this other hole here and then I find that um, so the, the swan's a little bit easier to get on than the horse but whether there's a will, there's a way. Now I'm scared to do it on camera in case I ruin him. There we go. Just shuffle him down. Carefully, carefully, carefully. Inch by inch. There we go. Right, I'll just leave him there for now and we'll sort him out later. Okay, so there's my horse. Um, so now we can put that to the side and we can start putting it together, yay. So let's start with the bottom section here. So you'll remember that we didn't stick this all the way down. We just stuck that down around here. And the reason is that we want to put in uh, our fence, to find my fence bits. I want to put in my fence pieces. Actually, might even be best to. Um, I want to put my fence in and I want it to be under this mat here. Uh, yeah, well, let's just do that now, shall we? So, all I'm going to do is put some glue on my tabs. move this out of the way. I'm going to put some glue on these tabs and 
And then I'm going to attach it to my base. I don't know how well you can see this on the camera. Right on, along the edge here. Can you see that? I'm attaching it right on the edge here. I'm going to put my tabs um, so I can fit three pet fence posts on each um, section. And I'm putting it under this mat but on the edge of the um, base. So I'm going to center my three... Um, fence posts on that edge like so so that they go underneath my it'll my tabs will go underneath right and so then I'm going to stick those down and then I'm just going to bring it around it's really hard to do on camera but I'm going to stick those three down and then move it around stick those three down and just making sure that they are stuck on the edge and fairly well centered on each of those little um, sections like so like that and then the last one goes on here and under the mat get under the mat there we go, like so. And I just need a little bit of glue clean up. Okay, so let me see if I can show you what I've done. So if you can see, the tabs are stuck under the mat. I'll lift the mat up. I still haven't stuck that mat down. We're going to do that once we get all our fence in. Right, so I've stuck it down there. Along the edge I've got three of each of the fence posts on each each face so I've got three there so then I can do that all the way around with the rest of my fence posts and I will then attach all of my fence posts together but we'll, we'll do that in a minute so we need to go around and attach all three each section of our fence post will fit around three of these and three fence posts will fit on each section okay so I'll go ahead and do that Okay, so I'm back again and I have gone around and put all of my um, poles in with all of my little um, swans and horses and my um, pole originally was wonky, it was on an angle and I realised that I needed to put my top section on at a slightly different angle so it's really worthwhile um, before you attach this bit to the top just grabbing one of your poles and making sure they line up because it's not perfectly symmetrical. Um, so I had to take my top off and rotate it round once and then put it back on. And I lost a tab on the way but I think, I think all the other tabs will hold it okay. So let me make that mistake so that you don't. <laughs> okay, but anyway, this is good. We're getting there. Um, so I have another optional extra if you're interested, which is to put in some fairy lights. So I have these lights. Again, these were stashed away in my cupboard. I, I must have bought them for something and then um, didn't end up using them. But it's a string of 24 um, lights. So I don't know that these ones are necessarily the best lights for the job. Um, something a bit less than this would probably be better but again I'm just trying to use what I've got so you'll notice that we have this hole that goes all the way through so my 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 next step to put my lights in which is again optional is to find the end of my lights <laughs> that will be the first step and when I find the end, I'm going to thread them all through from the bottom, from this bottom section up through the top. So all my lights are sitting up here on top. That's that's my plan. Um, some smaller lights would be better for the job. I'm not going to lie. But so if you're going out to buy some specially, then I would get some smaller ones than this but I want to use what I have so I'm just going to untangle these and then I'm going to thread them through so I 
this looks like it might be near the end there we go so I'm just going to tip it on its side and slowly feed them through the, all of the holes might even benefit to um, let's see I'm going to just got to get it through to that middle section and then just keep feeding them in till they get to that center and somehow pull them out the other end maybe my maybe my cricket hook will be helpful for this I can grab them not quite might need to thread a th few more through right so I'll just keep doing that until I've got all of my all of my um, lights on top wish me luck <laughs> okay this looks like a bit of a mess doesn't it but I've managed to thread all of my lights through onto the top and as I suggest these might not be the right lights for the job but I'm using them um, but if you're going to buy some then um, you might want to get some that don't have this big bulbous bit on it because I mean it, it'll be fine but this, it's a bit of a, it's a bit of a mess so anyway we get to cover that mess up with our tent top yay so this is where we get to cover up the tent like so so all we need to do is put some glue on these tabs around you can't even see can you I'm holding it and I'm sure I'm way off camera um, so bringing back our tent top we've got these tabs here so we're gonna put glue on these tabs all the way around and then line it up around the edge here and you know it just takes a little bit of a little bit of time to get it right probably you know popping in a bit more glue here or there um, just taking your time and I actually find it easier to do two to start with one on each side and then just go around and slide some glue under each of the tabs so let's just have a go at that and of course you can't see what I'm doing at all I'm I I don't have a better setup for this I, I apologize but I'm just gonna slide my little tent top on top and find out where which one I put the glue on this one here and I'm just lining up with that edge and you don't need to worry too much about it because we are covering it up with these we've got these guys here which we're going to put around there so you won't actually see it so you don't need to worry too much about how perfect it is so we're just going to line that up and then I can it's, it's already moved so as I say just take your time line it up press it down just do just do the best you can Okay, so then I need to go around to this one over here. I think this must be the one that has the glue on it. And line that one up as best I can. Looks pretty good. Um, my little cricket hooky tool, where are you? Where did you go to? Um, I'd like to use, but I can't find it. Here it is. I stop putting things away can't find them I'll just slide that under there and pull it out like so and just hold it down and then I can just go around and slide a bit of glue under here like so and I might just need to pull that tab down a touch and just line that one up so I can just go around and do that all the way around okay so I won't I won't keep doing that now I'll, I'll go away and do that off camera but let's have a look at what else we can do in terms of finishing off our um, carousel which is almost there so we have these here these big ones we have four of those and they go on our um, tent top Ugh. so I just 
I just put some glue across the middle and line that middle section up along here and then just bend it around, glue it to the next one and then glue that tab down and then I'll take the next one and I'll cut this tab off and then I'll line it up and I'll just do that all the way around so that they are the, the decoration for the top and then these narrow ones here are a decoration for the bottom so I just put glue all over this one and glue it down and stick it down like so for the one on each side I'm going to need to cut off those tabs because it's going to sit on this tab here so we don't want overlapping tabs it's going to sit underneath so I'm going to cut that tab off so that it sits flush up against this little white section here and they will go all the way around there as well. So I can do that one and then let's just have a look at this little one here. So this is our little, this is going to go on top of our tent top. So in this one here it's gold and black and this piece is E4. So I've cut out one, the, which one? The pink one is the blue mat underneath, the blue piece underneath, and then I've cut the silver out of what the um, pink section on top. So that's E4. So then I can just put some glue on this tab here. And I'm just going to bring it around like so and line it up like that and glue it down. Like so. Make sure it's attached. And then I'm going to do exactly the same with this one. Could be a bit trickier because it's this glitter cardstock. But we'll see how we go. I'm going to bring that one around and line it up. Like so. And then when that one is dry, I'm going to... See, it's not, it's not going to dry just yet. And I don't want to fiddle with it. I'm going to put glue on the inside of this one and then I will attach it to this one. And then that whole thing... With this one here and then with my little silver one on top goes right on top here of the um, tent so I will go away and finish all of that up and um, then I'll show you how we went okay I'll see you soon we can turn the lights on <laughs> all right see you soon well guys um, my little um, carousel is all finished so I'm super happy with the way that it spins on the Lazy Susan. I'm really glad to have added that in. I think the pink and the silver look really pretty and I'm really happy with that. I'm not overly impressed with the lights. So I think the reason that these lights have been languishing in my storeroom for a long time is because they're not very bright <laughs> so um, you can't they don't really come through in quite the way that I had intended them to but never mind um, you know perhaps you'll find some better lights if you want to give it a go um, I'll leave that completely up to you anyway um, I hope that this tutorial has helped you to be able to make your own um, carousel I am really I am happy with it you know and um, oh yeah I'm really happy with it I wish the lights had worked better um, but I'm definitely still really happy with it and I'm going to give this to someone and I hope it makes them very happy um, so that is the carousel the SVG files for the carousel are available in my Etsy store as an instant download um, I'll put a link to the in the description box to my Etsy store so you can go over there and have a look. I've got lots of other cool projects that you might be interested in. Um, otherwise, thanks so much for sticking out to the end of this tutorial 
and I hope I see you guys again soon. Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye.